Hello and welcome to the World of Loke channel. Today I'm going to be looking at a motor soft mount and frame protector kit for the Armatan Chameleon. A few months ago I reviewed an aftermarket soft motor mount and frame protector kit for the Diatone GT2 Crusader. Not long after that, Diatone released their GT2 2007 model that used a similar soft motor mount, but it had isolating bushes built into the mount. I've reviewed this and they really do work very well and there's minimal motor vibration transmitted through to the flight controller. The only downsides I can see are the extra weight, particularly from the bottom plate, and the holes in the frame for the bolts need to be larger to accommodate the bushes, which actually may cause a weak spot in the frame. Also, I'm not sure if you can get these as spares for the Diatone. Xcopters have just released a version of their soft motor mount and frame protector kit for the Arm Tank Chameleon, and I was keen to check them out to see how they compared. There's loads of 3D printed soft mounts available for pretty much any mini quad that's out there. But what makes these different is they incorporate a frame protector and soft mount to fit between the frame and the motor. And then they have a separate 3D printed mount, again in TPU, for the bottom of the frame. The motor bolts then use these supplied small penny washers to isolate the motor and the bolts from the frame itself. Although these don't use a 3D printed bush to completely isolate the bolts from the holes in the frame like the Diatone ones, they do isolate much better than the simple single 3D printed versions. And fitting these is remarkably straightforward. So to fit these, all we need to do is remove the bolts from the existing frame and motor. Now, one thing you'll need to do is source some replacement bolts because obviously when you put this on here, and then put the mount underneath and the washer. The original bolts, whatever you've used, are going to be too short. They won't engage in the threads in the motor. So, these bolts that are on here currently are just about six millimeters. Um, and the combined thickness of the frame protector, the motor mount and the washer, which we'll need to take into account, is, let's have a quick look, uh, it's 3.1, but I think by the time that the TPU mounts have um, compressed a bit, that's um, three millimeters is probably about right. So um, what we need is an additional three millimeters uh, longer bolt than we've got here and I've got some 10 mil bolts and although they say they're 10 mil in fact they're a little bit shorter than that they're 9.58 but one thing to be mindful of is that once you put these new bolts in make sure that they're long enough to hold the motor on but not so long that they're going to interfere with the motor windings because you'll get into all sorts of problems. So fitting these, it's dead simple. The frame protector goes over there and as you can see it really is a very good fit. It fits the frame beautifully there. Then you put the soft mount on here. Um, here's a new bolt. Just push that in there. Get the first one. Oh, must remember to put the washer on. And the washer is actually a really important part of this whole mechanism because what it does, it isolates the bottom of the bolt from the frame, which would transmit vibrations up to the motor. It's very simple, but it works incredibly well. And the ones that are on the Diatone 2017 model actually have these holes larger with a, a bush as well to further isolate things. I'm not convinced that's absolutely necessary. And the big metal plate at the bottom that they have um, is just additional weight. So let's get this first one on. Okay. 
There we go. And to be honest, you can fit these in about probably 10 minutes if you weren't having to make a video about it. On the original versions of these that came out that were for the Diatone GT2, uh, I used, when I reviewed those, I used um, some thread lock to fix the bolts in. And I'm not particularly a fan of thread lock, but I was just a little bit concerned that the, um, the bolts may come loose. I've tried with and without thread lock, and to be honest, you don't really need it, but it's entirely up to you. If you feel more comfortable putting thread lock on these bolts, that's fine. I just think it leaves a bit of a mess, and um, it's just it's just not that great to be honest. Uh, I'm pretty careful about checking the bolt tightnesses after each flight. In fact, it's something I tend to do with most of the bolts um, on the entire frame. So we just tighten that up, and these don't need to be massively tight and the fact that they're screwing onto something that's got some compliance is a bit sprung because these are TPU they don't seem to come loose so they don't need to be mega tight just make sure they're nipped up and you can see how, how this works this frame protector isolates the motor from the frame itself and the bottom mount isolates the bolt from the bottom of the frame using the washer on this side between the, uh, the TPU mount and the frame itself. Uh, for the those of you interested, just to quickly check what the additional weight of these is. I think it's about three grams that we had before. So that's what we need to include the four washers. And obviously the bolts will be on there anyway. So 3.5, 3.6 grams. It's not a huge amount to be honest for each one of those and what it does is I know from flying with this original GT2 here this has flown an awful lot and they look like brand new. If you clean these up with a bit of soap and water everything's great and it stops any potential issues with um, catching the frame when you have hard landings or crashes and delaminating the edges which can be a bit of an issue. So let's get the rest of these fitted. Okay, so there we go, we've got all four frame protectors and soft mounts fitted. And as I said before, it's entirely up to you whether you want to use thread lock on these bolts. And do check that the bolts aren't interfering with the motor mounts when you choose slightly longer ones. They need to be about 3 mil longer. Um, the way to check this is obviously you can see whether the bolt is actually interfering with the bottom of the motor and also if when you arm it, if it's the motors stutter and make all sorts of strange noises that means that the bolts are probably a little bit close to the motor windings. And the one thing we do before we actually go out and fly is just nip these up, make sure they're all as tight as they need to be. They don't need to be, like I said before, they don't need to be very tight. Just nipped up so that the compliance or the TPU um, squishiness if you like um, keeps the bolts almost like a thread lock bolt and I think these look pretty good in orange and they do they match quite nicely the orange anodized hardware of the chameleon and um, they do keep the frame looking nice and neat and tidy there we go ready to go out for a flight. 
I found these really helped making what is an already vibration free quad even quieter and smoother. The quality of fit of the frame protector is excellent and it will stop getting it, the frame all scuzzed up. Plus I think it looks pretty good. Obviously these did add a bit of weight to the quad but not too much. I'll leave links in the description where you can buy this kit and if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. I'll leave you with some in-flight footage I took after these were fitted and we'll see you next time.